Okay, everyone will just shortly make a, a start. If you do have any questions, please do feel free um, to put them into the, the chat and my colleague Agneta will be able to answer them. Um, we'll have time at the end as well for a Q&A. So if you have any further questions that haven't already been answered by the webinar or by um, Agneta in the chat, um, then we'll have time at the end to also discuss anything that may not have been raised. Um, so yeah, just before we get going, um, welcome to this webinar on, um, it's called the Smash Your Interview webinar. Um, so for some of our courses, undergraduate courses, um, and for some postgraduate courses as well, um, you will have to take part in an interview as part of the application process. Um, so we're hoping that this uh, webinar today will be able to prepare you for that. Um, part of the application process um, and answer any questions that you might have regarding um, the application process, how to prepare for your interviews um, and yeah, how to smash your interviews. Um, so yeah, just before we get started, my name's Harry. Um, I'm a student recruitment assistant with the University of Greenwich um, and I'll be hosting this webinar. Um, so welcome, thank you very much for coming. Um, and my colleague, Agneta, um, who's also works with me in student recruitment, um, she'll be answering questions in the chat. So we do have a Q&A function if you'd like to ask a question, um, and Agneta will hopefully be able to answer them for you. Um, but you can also ask questions in the chat, and, and Agneta will be um, monitoring that um, throughout the, the webinar. Um, yeah, so without further ado, we'll, we'll get going on this. Um, just some quick uh, things to go through regarding Zoom. Um, please do not share um, any personal information in the chat functions um, or to any of the individuals in the meeting. Um, please only use your first name if you're joining the meeting. Um, do not share any, as I said, personal information like your telephone number, any photos, address, um, any inappropriate language. Um, this is a, a, a webinar to, to discuss um, information relating to interviews. Anything that is completely you know, out of the ordinary, we, we will be able to um, flag that. Agneta will be able to see what comes into the chat. So please do keep everything um, appropriate. Um, and please do not directly message myself, for example, as the host, because it will be distracting me from providing the webinar. So please do keep your messages to just in the chat. Um, and Agneta will try her best to get through everything she can. Um, and as I um, should stress, this webinar is being recorded. Um, so hopefully later on, we'll be able to release some of this information onto our website and you'll be able to watch this recording um, later on uh, at, your own, at your own pace and your own time. Um, okay, this is just to do with how to remain anonymous on Zoom. Um, after clicking the joining link, you're already in here already, um, but you can put in a different alternative name. Um, all of you would have been joining without your video at the moment. Um, and also all of your audio would have been turned off for the, for the, um, for the, for the webinar as, it's, as it goes on. Um, but as I said earlier, please do ask questions um, or type comments into the chat. Okay, so hopefully by the end of this webinar, we would have gone over to um, what to expect on the day of your interview, um, how to effectively prepare for your interview, um, the key criteria for selection during the selection process, and some tips on best performance. And then a QA and a right at the end. Okay, so what is the point of an interview? Um, as I said at the beginning, it's not every single one of our courses that require um, an interview as part of the application process. Um, however, we do um, provide, we do have an interview as part of the application process for certain courses. Um, so this is to make sure that we, we are having the, the most suitable applicants for the courses that we provide um, and that each uh, applicant is given a fair and equal chance in securing their place. Um, we want to make sure that the process is transparent um, and it will be conducted within legal uh, requirements. Um, and of course, we want to make sure that the best and most suitable candidates are being selected. If, for example, you wanted to go into something like um, 
adult nursing, um, midwifery, things like this. These are very, um, you know, professional um, courses where you would have to undergo placements and working in a health setting, things like this. So we need to make sure that, you know, we are risk assessing the candidates um, if they will be coming out um, as prepared to go into a very professional uh, environment um, and whether you'll be suitable HCPC registrants. So that's for the for those that are that will be monitored and regulated by the um, Health and Care Professions Council. Um, so basically, by by law, um, people must be registered um, with the HCPC um, in in many of the professions in the UK. So, for example, you want to study um, paramedic science and you want to become a paramedic, then the HCPC regulates the best practice and standards related to that particular health service. So we need to make sure that if you're going into those um, roles, into those courses, you will be able to you know, meet the requirements set out by the uh, HCPC. Now, of course, that's just health courses related. There are other courses that require interviews and we'll go into that into some detail um, uh, throughout the webinar. Okay, so interview tips. Um, there is a, a kind of new interview process. Now, not every single course uses this. So for example, some of the teacher training courses, they do have an interview, but they don't necessarily use Choose and Book. Um, in those cases, it will, it will be uh, likely the faculty themselves, so the education faculty will reach out to you when they require you to, to book an interview um, and, and come in to be selected. Um, but the Choose and Book system is, is, a, is a new system. And to be able to allow you to, to book an interview slot at a time that suits you. Um, so this is for most undergraduate and postgraduate courses that do require an interview or an audition as part of the application process. So some of the you know, design courses, for example, you would need to bring in like a portfolio and things like that, and that will be discussed at your interview. Um, but the, the benefit really is that the process allows uh, yourselves to um, book either in person or an in line, on online uh, interview. Okay, um, when it comes to some of the education courses, for example, all of them will be taking place in person. They're not, uh, there's not a kind of um, choice to do them online. Um, now we have received a lot of inquiries about this. So if you if you have already applied for some of the courses that I've mentioned, midwifery, adult nursing, children's nursing, a lot of the health courses in particular, um, then then we we do say that you, you know you need to go onto the choosing book system and just keep on refreshing the page, keep on checking for um, new interview slots, interview times. Um, they will be updated regularly, um, but we do put the onus on yourselves to just check that. Um, it gives you a bit more um, power in being able to kind of choose a slot and time that works for you rather than, 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 than the admissions team deciding that. But please do check those things through on our website. They will be updated regularly, as, as I've said. Um, OK, so um, preparing for the interview. So where's a good place to start? Well, of course, I'm going to sound slightly biased in saying this, but I would say the best place to start is the University of Greenwich website whatever the course is that you're interested in um, that has an interview as part of the application process the best place to start is the website read through what is expected of you read through um, the course content the module content maybe even do some further reading around the subject that you might be interested in um, so if it is for things, as I said earlier, like nursing, midwifery, paramedic science, these are professional programs, right? So you will only get one chance to make a, a very good impression. Um, and as part of this, you will need to make sure that you are demonstrating particular skills and particular kind of, um, yeah, uh, characteristics i guess so you need to show that you're committed you need to show that you're motivated in this area um, and you need to show that you you can practically work what the course asks of you when it's full time that you will be able to to do that um, whether you will be able to attend the placements and pay fees and things like that this is all very um, important now of course interviews are a formal process um, so you would need to, of course, make sure that you're dressing appropriately for these interviews, speaking a formal language, um, 
And, you know, one day, hopefully you'll become a registered nurse, a midwife, a paramedic. As I've said, these are professional programs moving into a sector that is very professional. So you need to keep that in mind. OK, so this is just an example. So this is something that would be useful to, to ask yourself when you're thinking about the interview. Why do you want to become a and then what the course might be? You need to make sure that you're showing many of these features and characteristics, as I've said earlier, an understanding of the field that you want to go into, a drive and passion, a caring nature if it's for certain health courses like children's nursing, uh, where you might be working with very, very young children, you know, newborn children in the case of midwifery and things like this, authenticity, enthusiasm and motivation. You need to make sure that you're translating um, your skills and experience to the course and to the program leaders and to whoever it is that will be interviewing you. Um, how did past experiences for you translate into um, you know, being able to manage what will be a potentially quite a stressful environment? Um, you know, for example, if you were going into a health setting like being a, a nurse or a paramedic, it might be quite a stressful environment. So you need to be able to explain how you'd be able to kind of manage these settings as well. Now, I would really recommend um, trying out what's known as the NHS values quiz. Um, this will allow you to kind of understand what the core values are um, within a kind of health profession. Um, it's, it doesn't take too long. Um, it, you just, it kind of ans asks you quite a few questions and then works out roughly. So, you know, it might, it might ask you, do you like to look after children, things like this, then it will be able to map roughly where it thinks, uh, where, where would be best for you to work within a health setting, for example. Um, and of course, also look on the, the National Career Service website. This includes real life stories from NHS staff. Um, so it will give you a really great kind of insight into what goes on in, in the world of, of the NHS and things like that, okay? OK, so these are some of the things you might want to bring up in your interview, what you like, what excites you about the particular course and role, what your core values are, your skill set, um, past educational experience. This is really important and also past work experiences. I think this one is, is particularly important if you can already show that you've, you know, you demonstrate that you've got um, experience under your belt in the health setting, let's say. Um, then that will be really taken upon by, by um, the interviewers. And then personal experiences, these things do, do matter and they do count in, as, as part of the interview. Um, and, and if they are, um, if they can translate into to what the course is that you'd like to do, they, they can't necessarily be completely abstract. They do need to be connected, but they, they, they can definitely be um, used and, and will be helpful for, for the interview. Okay, so how to prepare. So as I said earlier, a good place to start is our website. Uh, reading through, revisiting, going through the course page, checking through what the kind of modules are for the course. Um, if you wanted to go into educational health courses, then you should make sure that you check all the mandatory checks that will be required, identification that you will need. So you will need to bring certain things along to the interview. Um, and if you're a candidate for some of the design courses, as I said, animation, design, architecture, um, you will need to bring a portfolio to the interview day. Um, and then that will be discussed as part of the interview. OK, but you might be asking, well, what is a portfolio? Um, it's a creative piece of work. It's a body of work that will show off your kind of imagination, um, your current skills ideas um, and, and many other things as well. Of course, we, you know, um, we don't expect that you would have already mastered animation, have already mastered um, you know, design and things like that. But if you can show that you've already got a passion in that field, then that will really translate well when you're explaining your portfolio during the interview. Um, so you might show sketches, uh, drawings, photography, um, craft work, 3D work, whatever it is that is suitable for the course that you've applied for. Um, generally, it will contain physical, uh, it can contain these things, which is a physical, dig digital, interactive work or screen-based work. So if it's animation, for example, you might want to show more screen-based work. 
Um, if it's an architecture course, you might want to show more, um, you know, physical or like written work or sketches and things like that. Okay, if you are going for one of these design courses, then you need to make sure you bring your portfolio with you on your interview day. Um, now, if you're based outside of England and have been asked to send that in, then you need to do so at least three days before your interview date. And you would email a design admissions um, team. So that's just design underscore admissions at greenwich.ac.uk. Um, online interviews are only available for those who do not live in England though. So if you are, um, you do reside in England, then you would be expected to come uh, in person for these interviews. And how you would need to save it. So you can see the format there. So for example, if you were John Smith and you were doing animation, that would be the kind of portfolio, how you'd need to save it. Include your name, your UCAS ID or applicant ID, the course you're applying for. Um, and then you'll have the opportunity to discuss this during the interview. Okay, so some of the things that you would want to include in the portfolio. Um, now these aren't necessarily just the only things, but these are things that would be really um, suitable um, for, for the portfolio. Um, so drawings, as I said earlier, any sketches um, that, that show um, your kind of passion for the field that you'd like to go into, um, photography, um, of course, you know, the eye is very important when it comes to um, architecture, um, whether it comes to making and designing things, you might want to bring in a 3D artifact that you've made, a model, uh, metalwork, woodwork, um, even clothing potentially. Um, if it's design technology, then um, your portfolio would not just consist of, of those things. So you might have to bring in other things as well. Um, and then disciplinary skills. So of course, this depends on the specific course you're applying for, um, but it includes work that, that shows some sort of potential um, for developing your chosen area. So it'd be really fantastic if you, you came to your interview and you'd shown you'd thought outside of the box um, and you'd come up with potentially a new concept if it's something architectural, um, if it's something design related, animation related, and, and maybe you've found an area that's not been touched upon before, that would really show that you've, you've gone kind of above and beyond already. Um, and uh, the interviews will really, really like take to that. Okay, so this is just specific guidance depending on your course. So as I said, um, if you are doing one of these courses, then you need to make sure you, you prepare your portfolio um, according to the, the instructions set out for your course. Um, so you can find a lot of this information on the website. You should also be given some of this information as well. Okay, so before your interview, there are a few things you need to make sure that you're doing. So obviously this depends on whether your interview is online or in person. Um, so if it's online, you should, you should receive an email invite before your interview. Um, and it will be a link for you to join a kind of Microsoft Teams meeting. Um, before you set all of that up, I would definitely recommend giving yourself a lot of time before this to make sure if you've got internet connection issues, um, or whatever it is, it might be that the Teams meeting takes a while to load. Make sure you give, give yourself plenty of time. Um, make sure you're using a PC or laptop for the online experience. It's really, you know, not kind of a, a good image if you turn up trying to do an interview and, and you're on your phone or something. Um, it just doesn't, it doesn't work as well and it doesn't look as professional. And it doesn't look like you're taking the interview as as seriously. So make sure that you, you do use a, a PC or a desktop or a laptop. Make sure you are in a quiet place. You don't want to be doing an interview in a, a noisy cafe or in, in, a, you know, in a public park where there's people running around you or whatever it is. You need to make sure you're in a quiet place. Um, using a, a neutral background. Um, so again, you don't want the kind of background to be um, 
you know you in in a shop or something like that you need to make sure that you're in preferably your home or a quiet part of a of a library or something like that make sure you're in a, a quiet setting and as i said make sure you give plenty of time to set up your device log in um, and prepare everything good 15 10 minutes before um, of course you you know you you might be feeling nervous before the interview um, but that's why if you take 10 15 minutes make sure you've got water with you as well um, and and just have a kind of 10 15 minutes to just you know breathe and, and get ready for the interview um, make sure all of your sound and, and video work you don't want to start the interview and, and realize that your headset doesn't actually work or that no one's going to be able to hear you so make sure all of that is is fully prepared and of course be well dressed and comfortable um uh, you know i can't stress this enough although it is an online interview you will still be expected to to look professional um so dress dress just as you would if you were turning up to an in-person um interview um now on top of that I would definitely recommend making sure you're in an area with good lighting. Um, this would make sure that your picture is clear. Um, you know, the interviewer want to make sure that they can see your, your facial expressions because that can also um, show them quite a lot about what who you are as a person. Um, if you're smiling and how you're responding to questions is really, really useful for the for the interviewers. Um, and, and try to make sure that the lighting is, is in the correct kind of um, direction so that um, you do not just appear with like a, I don't know, a shadow of your face or whatever it is. Um, and make sure that you are um, looking into the camera. So just as you were in an in-person interview, you would be trying to keep eye contact. You want to make sure you're doing the same thing in an online interview um, as well. Um, and... On top of that, if you were to be doing this in person, it will be a, a similar set of um, things you need to make sure you prepare. Um, but in, this would be slightly different in the fact that the, the email invite will go into your email inbox. Um, sometimes we get applicants that, that can't find their invites. So make sure you check all of your spam and your junk just in case. Before you arrived, um, if you're attending um, one of the health courses related interviews and it will all be at Avery Hall campus um, and a lot of the and as well a lot of the you know education courses as well um, so those will take place at Avery Hill campus um, in the Mary Seacole building um, so I would actually really recommend if, if you know exactly when your interview date is uh, maybe come and have a look at the site a few days before or even a week before familiarize yourself with where the buildings are because you don't want to turn up with you know 10 minutes to spare and you don't know where mary seco is or you don't know where, your way around um, of course there will be you know security around can help you but just make sure you give yourself plenty of time in preparing for for the interview if it's in person um, taking into account whether it's you know travel disruptions um, train strikes things like that take all of that into account when you are going for your in-person interview. As I said, make sure you turn up with plenty of time to spare. Um, you will need to bring official documents for inspection at your interview. I'll go into more detail on this in a minute. Um, and prepare yourself for what will be a panel interview. So you will be answering questions, but to multiple panelists. So it won't just be one to one, it will be one to maybe two or more people, okay? Um, bring a bottle of water. Um, and again, make sure you're well-dressed and uncomfortable. Okay, so as I said, you will need to bring in a few things um, for the actual interview process. You will need to present certain documents as part of the interview process. So your passport or driving license, of course, if you're going into something like paramedic science, you want to become a paramedic, then you will need to, of course, have a driving license. Um, and a lot of these other things as well. So if you're a home applicant, UK born, you need to make sure you bring a current valid passport or UK driving license. Um, and others also um, apply. Now, I should say, if you didn't know already, the majority of our health courses are, are not open to international students as a result of uh, visa requirements. Um, if you are, um, say, an EU student, you need to make sure you have settled status. 
Um, but we can go into more detail in this maybe in the Q and A section if you have questions or or um, or you're not sure how exactly that process works. I would also say um, when you're doing that research on our website. Um, you can scroll right to the bottom and it will usually have a section about whether the course is open to overseas applicants. Um, but again, if, if you can't find that or, or you're not entirely sure exactly uh, which courses are open to international students or not, then please do feel free to get in touch with us. I'll go through our contact details at the end if you don't already know how to get in touch with um, UK student recruitment, okay? Okay, so as I said, you need to bring an ID that must be valid. It needs to be in date um, and, and an original document with, with proof of your legal name. Um, so to ensure that you actually meet the professional requirements of the course, um, we will, might take a, a screen a screenshot. Um, so this might be, for example, if you're doing an online interview, they'd need to take a screenshot, run authentication, um, check which is then stored against your your record um, and that's held during an appropriate kind of early period uh, retention period um, then please make sure you have correct documentation prior to your interview and if, if you're unable to provide that then the interview will not be able to continue with your interview okay so this is really important you really need to make sure that you're turning up with all of the documentation required Okay, so this is just additional information depending on the course that you've applied for. If it's BA Social Work, BA Primary, um, you must also present uh, your letter of invitation, evidence of uh, a change of name. So if you've got marriage certificate, deed poll, if applicable, educational certificates. So make sure you bring them or have copies of them that you can bring to the interview and a passport size photograph again for your record so this is what it comes back to what i was saying earlier on at the webinar um, that these these are a lot of these are very professional programs right a lot of the, some of the design courses they're accredited with very um uh, very kind of well-renowned institutions um, right, like, like Reba, for example, the Royal Institution for British Architecture, these are really renowned institutions, whether it's with Midwifery, with Mifri, nursing, paramedics, uh, paramedic science, you know, these are courses that, that will hopefully set you up to move into a help setting in the NHS, um, potentially in the private sector, depending on what you've, what you've applied for, okay? So you need to make sure that you've prepared yourself with all of this documentation. If you're not able to bring these things or you forget them or whatever that or whatever happens then of course the interviewers aren't going to look at that as, as someone who is passionate is motivated and is determined with this course um okay so please don't do do take that into account make sure that you 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 bring all of this documentation with you now of course i'm not expecting that you would remember literally everything that i've said that you need to bring um, but you can find a lot of this information on the website as well. Okay, I'm just going to double check the chat. So the chat is, is okay at the moment. Um, again, please do feel free to use the chat. Um, if, you, if you need to find some information, Agneta will be free to, to find some of the links maybe for you. So feel free to use it. Um, if it's a specific course, um, then again, Agneta will be able to help you with that. Okay, so during the interview, focus on the question. Okay, a lot of people when they prepare for interviews, they turn up with a preset view of what how the interview is going to go. Oh, they'll probably ask me these questions, so I'll prepare as if they're going to ask those questions. I would say that's a common mistake, and we'll come on to common mistakes in a minute. Prepare, as I've said, read around the subject do further reading um, on the NHS website if it's a health course, do further reading maybe, for example, if it's architecture, read about the REBA, read about the Royal Institution for British Architecture, do further reading, focus on the question. So do not prepare with a question in mind, prepare um, for, for whatever question might be asked. As I've said, answer what is asked, okay? Um, so do not, you know, turn up thinking, well, it's a nursing course or it's a midwifery course, so they're going to ask this. They might not. 
um, they might ask something very personal uh, related you know not you know delving in deep but they might ask something to, to kind of judge your character these are things that you also need to prepare emphasize your strengths okay so you know don't don't turn up and say oh, i've got no experience or something like that for example turn up and with with as much evidence of your strengths possible if you are someone who for example hasn't got a lot of work experience under your belt then you can still show oh i've been proactive in looking for this kind of work experience i've started volunteering i've started doing this this will show that you are motivated okay do not be afraid to ask for clarification or to come back to a question okay i think some people panic that when a question's been asked they have to oh i've got to find the answer immediately okay we're all human we understand that people are under stress and and there's a lot of a pressure a pressure around interviews so do you take your time ask for clarification if you if you're not 100 percent sure if the if the question is making sense um then they do feel free to do that and they will respect that a lot more rather than um trying to answer it um, kind of frantically okay and have some sensible questions ready for the panel okay if you come having done research maybe you've read um, an online kind of um, article around the area maybe you've read something specific about children's nursing um, and you say well i was reading this the other day about children's nursing is that kind of the work that i might be doing or you know make sure that you've come with prepared questions um because again that will really show that you're you're you've got the motivation you've got the passion there already and of course smile and be nice okay so you know if think of for example if you're going into healthcare um, if you were going to the hospital, you'd want to be treated respectfully. You want to be treated by a nurse who is very nice and is looking out for your best interests. That is also something that they'll be looking for when it comes to the interview stage for the, for the course. OK. So for more information, as I've said, we do have um, a few links that you can check out um, on interview preparation. So. Please do if you need to screenshot that or, or whatever, feel free. Um, but again, if not, you can just literally go to our main website, gre.ac.uk, and then just go to how to prepare interviews. OK. So I've gone through the main things you need to make sure that you you do bring to the interview in terms of documentation. I've gone through what you need to do during the interview, um, but I'm also going to give a few tips on common mistakes, things that you should not do during the interview. OK, so make sure you've come prepared. If you've come with not enough preparation, uh, the interviewers, uh, the academics, for example, they will be able to see that. They'll know if you've maybe not read around an area, especially if they say what, what area within children's nursing you're interested in and, and you're not sure, then you know they, they might be able to, to see that you're, you're not particularly um, decisive around particular things. Okay, so make sure you have prepared. Please make sure, as I said, right at the, you know earlier on try not to be late try not to look disorganized these are things that again will not um, translate well when it comes to um, the course itself um, but also to to the environment of a health setting okay if you if you're late to an interview there's something for something that is quite a serious profession professional program as i've said um then the academics might say, well, if they're going to go into an NHS setting or they're going to go into a professional setting in teaching or in design, animation, things like this, it's not it's not a particularly good um, characteristic to have. OK, so you need to be punctual. And this is the reason why at the beginning I stressed um, try to try to um, give yourself as much time as possible. Um, try to plan your journey. You know, not everyone lives near Avery Hall campus and I don't think any of us would expect that you would just live around the corner um, but make sure you plan your route check it a week before maybe test the route make sure that okay so I've tested it it takes me about an hour without traffic things like that test all these things in advance um, but also make sure you know a few days before and the day before 
that you're still checking that the route is all fine, okay? Because we know that there might be train disruptions and things like that. Take all of that into account. Now, of course, that is when it comes to in-person, but it goes the same when it comes to being online. Make sure that you give yourself plenty of time to get ready, um, get dressed, all of that kind of stuff, okay? Short answers, right? So if, if there is a, an open question, right? So a question that doesn't just expect you to say yes or no, something that expects you to go into more detail, then a common mistake is, is to give maybe like a one sentence answer. Now, that won't necessarily show that you have the kind of passion and the care for that course, okay? And that's what the the, the admissions tutors and the academics will be looking for. They'll be looking for someone who is is genuinely really interested, has shown so much passion, has done further reading, has proven that they've got some work experience and personal experiences. Um, you know, so let's say, for example, you've not got work experience. Some applicants think, oh, I've not got five years in as a health assistant or something like that. Um, then, then use a personal experience. Oh, you know, there was a time where you looked after your, you know, your parents, your grandparents or your 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 siblings okay these are examples of you with a caring nature with compassion um, so take those things into account as well and on top of that long rambling answers so there's a there's a kind of middle ground you need to find and in between um, something that's not you know a kind of five second answer but also not 10 minute a 10 minute answer okay so it needs to be concise work out you know, maybe two or three really good examples, for example, and, and kind of try to keep to them. Of course, you don't have to, you're not just limited to that, um, but try to keep things as um, concise to the point, use the best examples to answer the question. So you might think, well, I've got these three examples, but use the best one that will make sure that it fully answers the question, how you've dealt with a scenario, how you've overcome a challenge. These are things that will also be, that we really looked upon um, in, in, a, in a positive way. And over-rehearsed questions, uh, answers, sorry. So I said this again right at the beginning. If you've, um, you know, already written down, they will ask me this, and then they ask you a question and you give a pre-rehearsed answer, well, first of all, you're, you're not going to have answered the question. Um, and, it, and it shows a, a kind of lack of flexibility. It shows that you've, you've, you've not uh, maybe thought outside the box um, and things like that. So to make sure that you, as I've said, read as much as you can around the subject, um, but, but also try not to turn up having read, you know, maybe only a few, a few things and you're only using those as your uh, things to talk about. Okay, so try not to over-rehearse things. Um, there is a certain kind of flexibility that's expected, as I've said. And again, what I mentioned earlier, not answering the question. So make sure you really focus, ask for clarification, um, and, and then they'll, they'll be happy to, to help you uh, maybe reword the question for you and things like that. Nervous self-sabotage. So this is a really important one. Of course, it's, it is tricky, you know, um, not everyone is, you know, immediately, um, you know, used to just doing interviews or used to being in an interview environment. Um, but the worst thing to do is, is to turn up kind of preparing to fail. But with that as your mindset, um, you need to make sure that you've got a positive outlook, okay? Um, and, and make sure that you, you do, you know, find a way, maybe if your interview's in a few weeks, find a way that you can help manage your nerves, test ways that might be able to help you um, de-stress before, before something, before a, a particular challenge. And then you, you can get into the swing and, and more of a routine of being able to deal with those environments, okay? Okay, so what happens next? So you get a conditional offer made by UCAS. And then you'll need to meet your conditions by uh, the end of August. Um, depending on the course, you will have to do a DBS check 
and an occupational health assessment. Um, so your DBS, if you've already got one, for example, then that will be another thing that will need to be checked in terms of whether it's in date. Um, so it needs to be in date. And of course, it depends on what level your DBS is at. If you've only got one that allows you to, you know, let's say it doesn't allow you to work with children, then you would need to um, uh, kind of get an updated DBS and all of that will be done as part of the application process. And if you're unsuccessful, then you can ask for feedback on your interview. OK, so to do that, you would need to get in touch with us, um, ask for feedback um, and, and we'll be able to help you out. If you're unsuccessful and you want to know more about your kind of application, then you would get in touch with um, decisions at gre.ac.uk. OK, next steps. Right. So um, we've got a few things coming up. Um, we've got a few webinars um, that I think you'll you'll hopefully enjoy. Um, we've got um, a postgraduate open evening coming up on the, the 5th of April. Um, so definitely sign up to that if you're interested in postgraduate study. Um, and then definitely go on to the webinar part of our of our website um, and you can find all of the upcoming events on there. So I really recommend signing up to, to those as well. Um, and let me just uh, double check. So some of the things that you, you might have actually missed, um, we had an open day recently, so you might have just missed that. Um, but I'll just go through, um, follow us on all of our social media. Um, so our Facebook, on our Twitter, uh, our Instagram and on TikTok. Um, and then, as I said earlier at the beginning, if you wanted to contact us, then it will be the UK student recruitment team or the course inquiries team. Um, you can give us a call on 0208 331 9000 or email courseinfo at gre.ac.uk. OK, so we've we've got about 20 minutes or so um, for, for questions and answers. Um, so I'll just go through to this slide for now. Um, and I'll just stop the recording for now. But if you have any questions that haven't been answered, please put them in the um, 